Apple makes fantastic desktops and laptop computers. Sometimes it can feel hard to decide if you should be investing in a desktop setup or a laptop setup. And in this video, we're gonna help you decide when you should choose a computer like the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air, or when you should buy something like the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, or even an iMac. We're gonna go through everything you need to consider so you can make the best choice for yourself. If you need any additional help, I'm gonna have links to all my favorite computers in the description below. And also I've got a form you can fill out if you would like personalized help picking out a Mac for your setup. It used to be that Apple desktops were way more powerful than the laptops, but in today's world, it feels like the power that you can get out of them is pretty similar, especially when you take Apple Silicon into consideration. But there's a couple things that I think you really need to consider if you're trying to decide between a laptop or a desktop. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, where are you doing most of your work? If you're doing most of your work on the go and you're constantly moving from one location to the next, you should probably not consider a desktop computer at all because it's just gonna be annoying to have to deal with cloud storage or moving files across from your laptop to your desktop over SSDs. And this was me for a long time. I was working out of multiple offices, multiple locations, and it just didn't make sense to have a desktop computer that stayed at one spot. Instead, I actually just got a couple of monitors and had them at different locations so I could just plug my computer straight into the monitor. And so if you're moving around a lot, that's when I would say get the laptop over the desktop because you're gonna appreciate the flexibility of being able to move around while just getting screens, keyboards, and mouses that can live at whatever locations you're working at. But on the flip side, the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio both have a lot better thermal performance than what you can get out of the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air, especially the MacBook Air because there's no fans in it. The Mac Mini and the Mac Studio are both designed to work under a heavy sustained workload for longer, and you're not gonna run into thermal throttling with those. Whereas even with the specced out M4 Max, MacBook Pro 14 or 16 inch, if you're running heavier hitting applications, you will find that sometimes after working for a long time, your performance does bog down a little bit just due to the thermal design of the computers. But with computers like the Mac Mini that take the air in and out and are designed super efficient, this computer barely runs the fans at all because the airflow works well even when the fans are running quietly. And on the Mac Studio also, I never hear the fans rev up even when I'm doing a ton of video exporting and rendering, it still just keeps chugging along. So if you need that prolonged power, that's one area where I would consider buying the desktop instead. The next thing that's nice about getting a desktop computer is the new Mac Mini and Mac Studio are both so compact, they take up barely any space on your workstation. So it's easy to stash it off to the side, but with the laptop due to the screen that's on it, if you're not using the screen and you've got it closed in clamshell mode, you still have to take up some physical space to put it somewhere. But on the flip side, something that's nice about the computer is you can use it with the screen on a desktop setup and you can also put it on a stand and you can take advantage of the very high quality display that the Apple laptops are known for. The next scenario that I considered and why I actually bought the Mac Studio over the new MacBook Pro is because I do 99% of my work at a desk and I already had an older MacBook Pro that was still working fine. So for me, it made sense to invest all the money into one Mac Studio instead of buying a more expensive MacBook Pro. So with the same exact chip and memory, it's $1,000 more. So you save $1,000 by not getting that built-in screen and you also gain the better thermal performance. But you do have to still go get a high quality display. And if you get something like the Studio display, you're gonna be out around $1,500. You can also get the LG Ultrafine 5K display. You can find those for about a grand usually. And then the other displays I really recommend people buy, just a solid display, are the LG 27-inch 4K models. They have several different versions available. I've got one of my favorites linked in the description. So if you wanna save money on the laptop screen and spend more of your money on your external peripherals that you're gonna use anyways, then that's one of the areas where buying a desktop computer makes a lot more sense. Now, if you're comparing the Mac Mini to the MacBook Air, the same models of those are only about $400 apart, but that's still enough to get you that 27 inch LG display. If you look at the Mac mini with the M4 Pro and you compare it to the MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro, those are gonna be $600 apart. So again, just more money to put towards peripherals like your screen, your keyboard, your mouse, your external SSDs, and other accessories like that. So again, that's a reason why I would really strongly consider buying a desktop if you know you're gonna be doing a lot of your work at one location. But as soon as you start working from multiple locations and moving around a lot, that's when the MacBook Pro really starts to make a lot of sense because you can either get the displays that I recommend that have the Thunderbolt or USB connection built in, so you get your power and your video signal through one cable, or you can also always get a dock as well, and a dock can have any other peripherals like your computer speakers, keyboards, mouses, SD card readers, and all those things built straight into it. And that also sends your signal to your display and gives power for your computer. So a dock is a great way to make your laptop feel like a desktop. 
It's just an additional thing that you have to buy. With the Mac Studio, it has so many ports on the back of it, you really don't even need a dock or a hub to run it. And that's another way that you can save a little bit of money by getting the Mac Studio if you know you're working out of one location. I know people are in the comments too saying, hey Adam, if you get a desktop computer, you gotta buy a keyboard and a mouse. Again, I'm assuming if you're working at some sort of ergonomic desk setup, you're probably gonna go buy one of those anyways, even if you have a laptop. So it will cost more money to buy the desktop and to need the keyboard and the mouse, but it's something that I would say most users should be buying an external keyboard and mouse anyways and not just using their laptop keyboard all day long. It just makes a lot more sense to be in an ergonomic position than to be constantly hunched over your laptop screen, your keyboard, and your trackpad all day long. But the wild card device that we haven't talked about yet, and I almost hesitate to bring it up, is the iMac. And I know the iMac is not necessarily a good deal. They come in at about $1,300 for the base model, but for someone who just wants to get everything in the box and to be at one fixed location always, that's when the iMac does make a lot of sense because you get the keyboard, the mouse, the screen, the Mac mini basically built straight into it, and they are very nice computers. There's a lot of people that it just gets the job done. That's all they have to worry about. I would still recommend going for something like the Mac mini over the iMac because even though it is a little bit more expensive, then you can swap the peripherals out to your taste. So if you want a different keyboard or mouse, you can get a different one and not feel like, oh, I already invested in it by getting the iMac. Or over time, you might find that you get multiple different Mac minis you upgrade every couple of years. The same screen might last you a really long time. I use the same LG Ultrafine 5K display for seven years. That screen has been amazing for me. I probably had three or four MacBooks in the time I owned that screen. So getting one really nice display with the desktop can set you up for success for a long time. Just upgrade the desktop every couple of years. So if you've taken anything away from this video, I think it's this. If you're working at a ton of different locations and you don't already have a computer, go ahead and invest in a nice MacBook Pro or MacBook Air because they are very powerful and they work well even when in clamshell mode or using it with a dock, using it plugged into an external display. If you already have a computer or if you're planning on doing most of your work at one location, I really recommend getting the desktop computer for the optimal performance, the permanency of the install, and the ability to easily swap out your peripherals as time goes on. Also, if you're looking into the MacBook Pro versus the Mac Studio, then you can save about $1,000. You could always put that towards getting the new base model M4 MacBook Air, and I would personally take a Mac Studio and a MacBook Air over the M4 Max MacBook Pro, but that's just my opinion. If you're interested in buying any of the Macs we talked about, or for all my favorite Mac computers, I have links in the description below. If you need any personalized help picking out a Mac, fill out my form, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.